Good morning, everybody. Having tea this morning. This is my tea cup. I like this cup because it's dark inside and tea always stains cups. Sometimes they start to get that little crackle look and then they get all icky and dark. But you can't see that on this cup. So this is my special tea cup, even though it says coffee. Cheers. Thanks for stopping by. I wanted to talk a little bit today about stocking up on some um, staples on a low income. And um, one of the things I wanted to start with is oatmeal. Now I've had this cookbook. It's by Kathy Hester and she has a website too. And um, it's Outrageous Oatmeal. And she has some really inventive recipes in here. So if, if you can't afford meat or you can't, you can't find meat, um, check on, she also has uh, videos on YouTube where she has recipes. So you might wanna check that out. Um, again, her name is Kathy Hester. So anyway, I just wanted to say some of the things that you can do with oatmeal that maybe a lot of you haven't thought of or didn't know about because many people think of oatmeal just as a breakfast food. Oatmeal pancakes, quick oats, you know, uh, overnight oats, um, just those kinds of things. But you can also use oatmeal in savory dishes. You can use it to extend your uh, meatloaf, meatballs, anything where you can use a ground meat. You can put oatmeal in with it and just stretch your, oat, your, um, your meat. Or leave the meat out altogether and it's all about the spices. And that's the way it is with all cooking. Have a big variety of spices. Get yourself a good a uh, sausage spice recipe, get yourself a good savory recipe, Italian, um, whatever your favorite Mexican, you know, and you can make meat-like products out of oatmeal and it's not that difficult. You can also use oatmeal for oat milk. It's pretty easy to make your own oat milk. Um, you can use it, of course, in desserts. Um, you can use it in the bathtub if you have um, skin irritation. It's very soothing in a, in a bathtub. What else did I write down here? Mm. You can make oatmeal sausages. You can put it in your blender and make a flour out of it. It's a very versatile thing to stock up on and to have several as a backup so that you always have something available that's very healthy. It's, it's good for your cholesterol. I'm sure everybody knows that. But I just wanted to go over a couple of things in this book that Kathy says that you can make. And I've made a few of these and they turned out great. Um, you can make burgers, um, stir fries, steaks, macaroni and cheese. You can make like a cheesy sauce out of the oatmeal. Um, let's see. Uh, of course, desserts, but you can also make drinks. She has a recipe for uh, an oat chata, a vegan cream liqueur, chocolate mint creamer, uh, coconut oat vanilla nut creamer, London Fog Hot Tea, and a hot chocolate mix. Um, also, she has recipes in here. If you have dogs, you can make dog treats out of them. I've made several dog treats for my dogs. Depends on what leftovers I have on hand, and I'll add oats to it, and it's very nutritious for your dogs, too. So there are tons and tons of recipes in here. Um, she has nice pictures. I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of a glare. But um, so if you if you like oats, 
it's a good thing to stockpile. It, it just is, and, and they're cheap. So another thing that I recommend that you stockpile is rice. Because again, out of rice, you can make rice milk, you can make a rice flour, you can make desserts out of rice, like rice pudding. Um, you can also use rice as a meat extender uh, if you're a little short on meat or cutting back on meat. Um, or you can use it as a, you can make a rice water and it's uh, very good for your skin. And I believe for your hair too. So the, rice is very versatile. And if you're really cutting the bottom line, as far as finances go, and it's cheap. You know, you can go to the Dollar Tree and get a pound of rice for a dollar. So that's a good thing to stack up on. So you don't need to stack up on all these things all at once. You know, stack up, maybe you put $5 a week to the side just for stacking up. And every time you go into the Dollar Tree or wherever it is you shop, Walmart, um, you just buy five things. You can buy the rice, you can buy beans, you can buy, they have sugar, just all different kinds of things. And, and just put that away in your stockpile and then rotate it and figure out how much food that you need to survive for however long of a period that you need to. So, um, Stacking up on any kinds of beans. You can't go wrong with beans. <coughs> Excuse me. Very high in protein, very versatile. I'll be right. Tickle in my throat, I hate that. But you can use it for stews and burgers and loafs, and um, you can use it in soups salads. Uh, you can make a three bean salad with a vinegar and oil dressing. Just very, very versatile. You can make burgers out of it, make black bean burgers. You can even use black beans in a dessert to make brownies. There's uh, a recipe out there, well I'm sure there's several, several where you use black beans to make brownies and they're very good. Um, lots and lots of different spices. And this is something that you can grow if you have a little balcony, if, if you live in an apartment, you can grow it maybe on a sunny windowsill. You can grow yourself some herbs and keep trimming them. And if you can't use the trimmings right away, then save them in a little jar and let, let them dry. You can, you can bake them when you get enough. You can bake them in your oven at 200 or whatever the lowest setting is. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can do that. And uh, once you get all your spices dried, then just blitz them up in, in a little coffee mill or one of those little uh, cheap blenders. You don't have to get a bullet or anything. I know Aldi's has a, a, a blender that the little the little ones that you can use for drinks and things. Every now and then they get them in and they're like under $20. Pick up one of those for yourself because it's, it's very useful and versatile and you can make your own spices. You can make um, a Mexican spice blend. You can make an Italian blend. Um, some of the Asian spice blends you can make yourself. So you don't have to spend a ton of money on spices. And I always like to go actually to the Dollar Tree. They have a pretty good selection of spices. Aldi's has a good collection of spices that don't break the bank. Um, even Walmart, they have the, um, their own brand uh, of, um, oh, I forget what their, um, great value. They're great value spices that uh, are, are really reasonable. So pick yourself up some of those and then get yourself some little jars that you save from food, the little glass jars, 
or even you can save the old spice jars that you have and make yourself a blend of spices that you can use over and over again for making, say, oatmeal sausage patties, uh, savory oatmeal. Um, you can even use it in, in uh, meatloaf or whatever. So this way you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you want to cook. So that's something to stock up on. Another thing that I think is very um, useful to stock up on is an item called textured vegetable protein, and uh, they also call it TVP, and it's uh, derived strictly from vegetables. It's dried, and then you rehydrate it. it it's pretty flavorless on its own, um, and you can rehydrate it. Some people do it with water, but I like to do like a tomato sauce or, or a ketchupy sauce or whatever flavor you want, you can hydrate it in that too. And that's what I like to do. So, and it's not that expensive. Bob's Red Mill puts one out and I know you can get it uh, online on Amazon. So it's something that you might want to stock up on. I know a lot of people that are into prepping do buy that as a backup uh, source of protein. So you might want to consider checking into that. You can use it uh, as hamburger in, um, in lieu of meat. You can use it in chilies, in spaghetti sauces. Uh, you can make rehydrate it and add it to uh, beans or uh, vital wheat gluten, whatever to make burgers or burger flavored type of meaty, chewy kind of um, commodity. You can use it for that. So it's a very versatile thing to have on hand if you need to stretch out your, your um, meat rations and um, if they're not available. Um, I just mentioned vital wheat gluten. It's the gluten that is in regular flour. It's what makes your bread chewy. It makes your bread rise. It makes the nice strands in, in a bread. Now, if you're gluten intolerant, this is not for you because it will just put you right over the top as far as health, all kinds of health issues. So vital wheat gluten is not for you if you're gluten intolerant. But if you're not, it's like 80% protein. And you can even make your own by buying flour, just regular flour, making a dough and you wash it. And what that is, is you keep rinsing the dough. It doesn't fall apart once it's kneaded into a dough, it stays in a dough ball. And you put it in cold water and you wash it and then you rinse it. and Eventually, the starch all comes out of it, and what you have left is just the protein. And that makes very good, uh, a very good meat substitute because it's very chewy. Um, depending on how you cook it, you can boil it in, in a pot of uh, savory uh, water. You can make... Um, you can steam it, you can make sausages out of it, you can make roasts out of it, you can make burgers out of it. I mean, the sky's the limit. You need to use your imagination and, and combine everything. I always say cooking plant-based is so much fun. It really is. Once you, once you get hooked on it, it's like the sky's the limit. There's so many things that you can combine and make something else out of, it, it's just wonderful. So give that a try. And, and if you want to start eating more plant-based, then I would recommend that you stock that as well. Another thing is nutritional yeast, which um, is lovingly called nooch. So if you hear nooch, that's nutritional yeast. And it's a it's, uh, yeast derivative. I, it has a lot of added B vitamins, which is hard to get from just plant-based, but um, 
it has a very cheesy flavor. Some people like to put it just on popcorn and then it, it, it's very tasty. Not everybody likes nutritional yeast, but then again, not everybody likes cheese either. But, um, you know, it, it's something that you might want to have on hand if there's a shortage of dairy. You can make your own cheeses that are vegetable based and they're, they're not hard at all. And really mostly what you need is a blender. And if you want to make a block cheese, something like that, you can save some margarine containers or, you know, from yogurt or whatever. And you can also make cheeses out of it. So um, you, you want to stock up on that. And that's another thing that I would recommend buying in bulk because they do come in little tiny containers that are like six or seven dollars, which is outrageous. Uh, but if you buy it in bulk, it's much cheaper. I used to get it at uh, Earth Fair. We used to have an Earth Fair here and I'm very sour, sad to say they closed. So I can't get it there anymore, but um, I'm going to order it from Walmart the next time I, uh, not Walmart, from um, Amazon the next time I need it because that's a great thing to have on hand. Um, another thing is that you can do a lot with that are very high protein sources uh, are nuts, any kind of nut, um, hazelnuts, macadamia nuts, Cashews is a big, big thing to have on hand. Um, you want to get the raw cashews, but I've also used roasted when I didn't have the raw and it worked out okay. Uh, the um, raw cashews are a little bit softer and you can make creams and milks and yogurts and, and um, uh, creamers, all kinds of things, cheeses out of nuts. A lot of these companies now are coming out with nut-based cheeses. So my favorite um, non-dairy cheese is uh, Follow Your Heart. I like all their flavors and I think they are the closest, in my opinion, to dairy cheese. I've tried Daya, not so much. I've tried some other cheeses that I'm not real fond of, but I really like the Follow Your Heart cheese. It melts extremely well, and uh, it's, it's great in recipes, and it's great on crackers or a sandwich. So that's my favorite. So anyway, th those are some of the things that I would recommend stockpiling and building um, a pantry for the future and for your security. And uh, it's just, and, and a lot of these things are not that expensive. Probably the most expensive things are the uh, vital wheat gluten. Some nuts can be expensive. Um, the nutritional yeast, it can be expensive, but once you have it, you don't need a ton of it. Oh, my Lizzie, she barks and barks and barks. But anyway, that's just her MO. So I don't want to go too long with this video. I'm already approaching 20 minutes. Um, I'm just going to make this part one. And then I will make a part two with more things that I feel are good to stockpile, especially at this time of um, our existence. So anyway, I, I did stop in at Dollar Tree a few days ago. I was looking for soy milk. Sometimes they have soy milk really cheap. It's, it's a small shelf-stable box of soy milk. They haven't had it for a while, but I had gone to Aldi's and we have a Dollar Tree right next to Aldi's. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go in there and check and see if they have uh, the soy milk. Well, they didn't have that, but I did find this cute little scarf. And so lately, this has been my outfit of the day is a different scarf. I'm starting to feel like I'm very more shabby than chic lately. 
But anyway, <laughs> that's a whole nother story. So anyway, I just wanted to come on and maybe help somebody out and, and um, think, help you think of some alternative ways that you can get protein into your diet. So um, I hope this helps. And uh, I just want to say, stay healthy. I wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.